Okay, hi there and welcome to a new version of our circular flow video. Uh, a quick look at the circular flow of income and spending in the macro economy. To understand macroeconomics, it's important to understand there are key agents in the system. Households, uh, consumers, government, in other words, the state sector and also firms, businesses who supply goods and services. They are essentially the three big components of the domestic circular flow. The main flow from households to firms is in terms of demand, consumer spending on goods and services, perhaps a new car or some home improvements or a meal out in a restaurant. Consumer spending on goods and services is the biggest single component of aggregate demand and that's a flow from households to firms of course whose job it is is to provide to service to supply those goods and services. Now the act of production including tangible products like a car or perhaps even a network service like Netflix the act of production generates factor incomes and those factor incomes flow back to the household sector by and large in the form of wages, hourly payment for workers, dividends, a share of company profits, interest on capital, profits and rent from the ownership of land and other assets. So the essential basic circular flow is between households and businesses buying goods and services, firms supplying them and generating factor incomes as a result. Government of course has a big potential role to play in this system. There's a flow from households to governments in terms of taxes, particularly direct taxes such as income tax and national insurance. Households, some of their gross income goes in direct taxes, taking away from their disposable income. On the other hand, the government injects money back into the personal sector in the form of cash transfers. We, I'm going to call those social transfers. For example, the state pension, uh, housing benefit, uh, child benefit, universal benefit, of course, is an attempt to bring together a whole series of cash benefits. So the government, on the one hand, takes money away from households through taxation, but on the other, provides a, a boost to disposable income through social transfers. And likewise, there also flows from governments to firms in, in the form of government purchases, spending by the armed forces, for, for example, on new weapons and, uh, and machinery and armaments, spending by the National Health Service on the payment of staff and drugs and other resources used in providing health care. Governments can inject extra spending, extra demand into our circular flow through their own spending. And firms, of course, in theory, should also be paying taxes, corporation tax being a good example, a tax on company profits. They might pay a range of other taxes, for example, the carbon taxes or indirect taxes. The big issue at the moment, of course, is tax avoidance by some particularly larger transnational businesses. Well, this model is our basic circular flow, and so far, we've only really considered the domestic part of the economy, made up of households, government, and firms. However, of course, we know that most countries are open, open to trade, to investment, to the movement of people. There is an external sector of the economy. A sizable percentage of household spending on goods and services leaves the circular flow in the form of imported goods and services. Britain, of course, has quite a high level of import spending. Equally, consumers in other countries will spend money on UK produced goods and services. They're called exports and exports provide an injection of extra demand into the circular flow system. The UK does actually run a trade deficit at the moment, quite a sizable one. We import the value of our imports is well in excess of the value of exports. So in that sense, there's a net loss of demand and income from the circular flow. So what we've done here is built a little external sector into the domestic sector. Uh, one more sector we can also think about is the financial sector of the economy. Now this is more complex than I'm showing here, but just to illustrate the point, some household income, for example, after tax, is not spent on goods and services, but is saved. And firms can save money as well. Those savings typically in the form of 
household savings in bank accounts and uh, pension funds and other forms of savings. Those, t those savings typically flow into the financial sector, including the big commercial banks, the pension funds, the insurance companies and other aspects of that. Now, one of the roles of the financial sector, and you will study this in much more detail at A-level, is to transform the savings of individuals and, and companies and investors and sometimes government to transform those savings into productive investments. Oftentimes, businesses go to the capital markets to raise equity to help fund their investment, or they might go to a financial market to help uh, to, uh, to resource the financing of a bond, perhaps go to a bank to take out a loan. The job of the financial sector, one of the key roles, is to turn the savings of agents in the economy into finance for productive investment. And that investment by businesses, again, is an injection of demand into the circular flow. Somebody's got to produce the machinery, somebody's got to produce the factories and the telecoms infrastructure and the ports and the railway lines, etc. That investment adds to the demand for goods and services in our circular flow. Well, this is one way of looking at the circular flow. It includes the external sector and the financial sector. Uh, some economists have criticised this model for ignoring environmental economics. And if you're particularly concerned with that, then I do suggest you have a look at Kate Rayworth's brilliant work on donut economics, where she tries to remodel the circular flow to take into account the critical issue of sustainability. I haven't looked at that in this video, but you certainly might want to research that. There we go, a basic circular flow of income and spending in the macro economy.